Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Doug Halbert. He's the elected city prosecutor in the city of Long Beach. Recently returned from Washington, D.C. A legendary congressman invited you and some of your colleagues, John Lewis from the state of Georgia, civil rights icon, uh, to talk about your gang prevention strategy, which apparently has been successful. Yes. Tell well, us about it. Well, thank you for having me on, on the show. Um, yes, uh, it was an honor to be invited to Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. to talk about our gang prevention strategy. Uh, we received a national award from Neighborhoods USA about mm -hmm. two years ago. Mm -hmm. and I remember we talked about it, actually. Yes, yeah. we talked about it on this show. Mm -hmm. uh, shortly after that, we received a Department of Justice grant award of $200,000 mm -hmm. to expand our, our programming. Uh, it's a three-pronged approach to, to gangs. Uh, prosecutors and law enforcement traditionally focus on the suppression side of gangs, right. essentially very aggressive and robust uh, you know, arrest and prosecution mm -hmm. of gang members. And that's absolutely necessary, but I think if prosecutors and police stop there, they're missing the bigger picture. I think we need to focus a lot more on intervention to prevent kids from joining gangs in the first place. That's the second prong. And the third prong is to work on rehabilitation. Mm. When people are ready to leave the gang life, there has to be a way to move them into jobs, move them into school, back into schooling, and help to get them on with their lives. I if wanna, you don't do all three, you're not going to be I successful. I want to ask you about the rehabilitation. Uh, lately, I've been speaking with a variety of your colleagues in law enforcement, and there does seem to be amongst both liberals and conservatives, Democrats and Republicans, a view that the lock them up, throw away the key, keep their felony record intact is not working. Because in the final analysis, many of these folks are going to be released. Mm -hmm. And if they are released, including gang members, uh, and can't get a job, mm -hmm. well, w what happens? They turn back to crime. And so tell me what you're doing with your your gang members, you know, to try to help them get on the straight and narrow. Well, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. In the last few years, a lot of information has come out mm -hmm. that the heavy reliance on incarceration is both ineffective, uh, number one, and number mm -hmm. two, not sustainable. Right. The cost right. of it can't be sustained. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Long Beach, among the things that we do, um, we have an opportunity for people to get off gang injunctions, for example, when they're oh, ready right. to leave You have that program, I remember. Life. Yeah, you we have call it Operation Opt Out. Right, right. And we work with local ministers and mm -hmm. local nonprofits, and they often identify people who, uh, and, and actually they're pretty good at screening mm -hmm. people who are really done with the gang life. Uh, but at that point, the, often they're depressed, they don't see a future, they've got right. criminal records. Uh, we help with tattoo removal. We actually partner with Father Greg Boyle. Right. Uh, he has a wonderful program mm -hmm. uh, for free tattoo removal. They do job uh, placement um, services and a number of other things that are so critical to getting people on with their lives and getting out of the, the, the gang life and the gang friends and associates that mm -hmm. got them in trouble in the first place. But they have to be ready to do that. But what about job placement? Because I mean, that really is, in my opinion, key. You get someone a job. They don't have time, <laughs> you know, to get involved in nefarious activity. Well, and, and to get them in a place where they can take a job, often there's a lot of life skills that are necessary. Right. A lot of the active gang members, almost all of the active gang members that I've come across, dropped out of school very right. early. We're talking 7th, 8th, ninth but grade. what about their records? What about, you know, low-level felony convictions? which are still felony convictions. There are jobs, uh, obviously some jobs you're gonna be excluded from, mm -hmm. but there are, there are jobs that are out there. Connecting them with those jobs are, are difficult, but also they have to be in a place where they can take that job, show up to work on time, right. have the skills necessary uh, to, to pass a job interview, to fill out an application. So when you're in DC and otherwise, mm -hmm. clearly the fact that you're focusing on rehabilitation seems to be a highlight. Was it discussed in your meetings? Are you continuing to push this element? Yes, uh, Operation Opt Out is a very mm -hmm. important part. And as I mentioned, it's a three-prong approach. Right. Any one prong by itself is gonna be unsuccessful. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I think prosecutors and police often leave those other things, intervention right. and rehabilitation to other people and just you know let them do it. What but are you I, doing? I think we need to get involved in it. And I, I really, I, I, I drill on you in large part because you're the one that really deals with low level felons. Because if it's a higher level felon, it's gonna be prosecuted by the district attorney. Right. I mean, I guess you would deal with wobblers more than anything. Correct, we, yeah. we have misdemeanor felony wobblers, right. but a lot of right. the people that are charged with misdemeanors have felony records. Right. So just because the most recent crime was a misdemeanor right. doesn't mean the person isn't a, isn't a dangerous right. felon. And, and at the end of the day, we treat, we treat cases very, very seriously, and mm -hmm. some people need to be separated from society Again, and put we know in jail that. and prison. We know that. And but what do you do about those 
that don't need that, that mm -hmm. might learn from their lesson, that might, have, might benefit from an opportunity to get a second chance uh, right. on a mistake that they made. Um, our office is a leader in diversionary programs right. that allow people to be uh, handled, to sec effectively take accountability for what they did, right. but not through the criminal justice system. One thing you've also been discussing for quite some time is one of the most effective intervention programs uh, to thwart gang participation is the presence, and I'm taking nothing away from mothers, mm -hmm. but the presence of fathers mm -hmm. or male figures. Absolutely. Talk to me about how you've been focusing on dads well, I and mentioned, mentors. I mentioned our intervention piece as being extremely important. Mm -hmm. what we, we focus on truancy. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've seen over and over again in the families where high, there's a high level of chronic truancy, particularly in the earlier years, we noticed that, especially with boys, there's no mm -hmm. male uh, role model right. figure in, in the household. And families come in all shapes and sizes uh, today. There is no one model that works best. Um, but I will tell you, it, w when we've matched families and, and children, mm -hmm. particularly young boys, with male mentors, we found that we're most successful. And, Why? And we found that anecdotally. And I, in doing yeah. some research, there was actually a massive study done by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Mm -hmm. They did a study with about 1,300 participants, and they found that students who met regularly with mentors were 52% less likely to sip, skip school, 46% less likely to stop excuse me, to start using illegal drugs, mm. and 27% less likely to start drinking alcohol. Why? Uh, In your mind, or what do the studies tell us? I, I think male role models, more than anything else, help reaffirm the conduct that is acceptable and is appropriate mm -hmm. uh, for young boys. Young boys want to model their behavior after somebody else. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a male role model that you're close to that's positive, you're going to model your, be your behavior after somebody else. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a neighborhood with gangs, you're gonna model your behavior after the older uh, kids that are now running with uh, the gangs. Uh, there are a lot of things that can, that can benefit, not just social acceptance and social skills, but think of how many kids are detached from social interaction with older adults because they have their faces in video games uh, all day long. Having a positive adult male role model in their life has so many benefits that we're going to start pushing it this year with mentoring programs. What about dads though? I mean, look, if a dad's not available, okay, that's mm -hmm. okay. You know, we'll, we'll deal with it otherwise. Like you said, families come in all different si sizes and shapes. But how do we convince dads to remain available without passing judgment? You know, maybe a dad's been absent for a few years and he's embarrassed. How do we make it okay to come back? Well, that, that's a great question, and mm -hmm. a lot of people are asking that. I mm -hmm. know that at the federal level, uh, the President's My Brother's Keeper right. um, program mm -hmm. uh, and strategy has a lot of talk about that. But mm -hmm. I think keeping children uh, connected to their, their father, even if their father isn't uh, in their day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. keeping them connected uh, in, the, in the family often is, it has benefits. Um, but that's a social question that is being looked at more now right. than I think any time in the last decade. Uh, the importance of the role in the father and how to keep the father uh, in, in the family. I'm wondering, and I know uh, you want to be careful about social engineering and getting government to involve, but look, you're probably dealing with young men in gangs that may have become young fathers. Is it part of your programmatic efforts to talk to them about parenting? Well, well there are, and there's a cycle uh, mm -hmm. that happens. Young parents, often they were, they were they had young parents themselves. Uh, and so we actually, in our truancy program, we push parenting classes. Mm. Often, in fact, we had a case where we had a, a woman with uh, six children who were at the age where they're starting to miss school an awful lot. It turned out she grew up in a foster family environment. She had no good parenting right. skills to model hers after. Um, so parenting classes were extremely important for her, and we actually assigned her a mentor, another mother who was very successful you. with her children. Congratulations on your success. Uh, I really appreciate what you're doing. His name is Doug Halbert. He is the city prosecutor for the city of Long Beach. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and this is Charter Local Edition.